Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Walking in His Word. I am Kwame Thomas, one of your local leaders in the Andrews District of Churches. Now, tonight, we are switching gears a little bit. We have just ended the Quest for Eternity Gospel series, and um, we're still waiting for you to post your comments, your queries, your concerns as it relates to that particular topic or the suite of topics that we discuss. But now we're going to be looking at women in Scripture. But it's not going to be from the typical angle that you would have expected where you just call some names, you want to look at Ruth, you want to look at Naomi, you want to look at Mary or Elizabeth. No, we are going to look at the theme that these women represented. So we're going to be having four themes. We're going to be looking at one tonight. Um, the first theme, which would be for tonight, that would be faith and resilience. After that, we'll be followed um, by strength and worth. We're looking at the divine encounters and we're looking at community and relationships. Now, for that particular topic tonight, faith and resilience, I am joined on screen by Sister Jessica Jones. She's fresh, she's new, so we want you to allow her to feel very, very, very welcome. And then in the background, you'll hear the voice of Sister Chanel Phillips. So without further ado, let me just pray, and then I welcome both sisters to the program. Let us pray. Eternal Father and our God, as we come before your presence, we want to thank you for the opportunity that you have given us time and again to break bread in such a fashion. And we pray for the hearts that you, would allow, you have allowed your words to work upon, that they may in fact be blessed, so that you, dear Father, may be glorified above all. Bless us to this end. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, ladies, Sister Jessica, thank you for making the time or taking the time to be here tonight. Looking forward to a very lovely discussion with you. Um, and Sister Chanel, yes, sir. welcome back. I hope you would have gotten an opportunity to rest, even if it's just for the week. And, um, <laughs> and just to remind you, our viewers, that you are in fact live with us, so feel free to post your queries, your comments, your concerns somewhere so somewhere down there so i'm going to go over to you sister Chanel, so you can just tell us how you're planning on um directing the ship right here okay thank you elder kwame and good evening to our viewers welcome thanks for joining us as was said in the introduction we will be looking at the various women in the bible women of faith women of god and the topics or the themes that came out of their actions and this evening we'll be looking at faith and resilience and the first one I'd like to start off with is to focus on Ruth. Yeah, Ruth. Yes, no. I'd like to focus on Ruth. Um, and we have here, how did Ruth's faith and resilience impact not only her life but those around her? Ah. Uh. Sister Jessica, you want to hold that one first? <laughs> um, while, while you gather your thoughts, if, if, yes. if you are so minded. Um, let's start by looking at what Ruth um, sacrificed. Um, we can look at how the story started. It started with her mother-in-law, Naomi, being in, in the land of Moab. She left with her husband, she left with her two sons. Um, they had their wives and but um, misfortune, she um, befell her, and so both her sons died, and her husband also died. Um, we know that there was a famine in, in Israel, but we don't know what it was that might have caused the demise of the men in her life. Now, at that, po at, at that point in time, you find that without, without a man, if you didn't ho own extensive property, it would be difficult as a woman for you to survive in some areas because it was, it was, I won't use the word yet, you know, but it's not, it's not, it's not as egalitarian as it is now in this day and age. So Ruth decided to, um, well, Naomi decided to come back um, to Israel. And then Ruth and, and Orpah decided that, listen, we're going to come with you. But she persuaded both of them, or she tried to persuade both of them to stay with their family because the custom was that you would go back to your father's house or you're going to stay and wait until a redeemer would have been able to come and actually raise up seed to, to, to that person who was lost. Now, the only one that was persistent was Ruth. She decided to stay and to the extent where she made that famous statement, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And she, she went there. So the story, though, can be found in Ruth, well, right through the book of Ruth, 
Um, that's one of the Old Testament books, and it's just between Judges and First Samuel. So we're going to look at Ruth chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. That's Ruth 1, 16 and 17. Now we can see what came out there. Um, so while, while that comes up on the screen, we can simply say that Ruth's faith in God and her loyalty to her mother-in-law, Naomi, led her to a new life in Bethlehem where she, where she, was, she met Boaz. You know, so Ruth met her boys and she became an ancestor of King David and then subsequently um, Jesus Christ, or ultimately Jesus Christ. But when you read, and as I stated in earlier editions or episodes, I am reading from the New King James Version. What you'll see on the screen is the King James Version. So it says, But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. That's a covenant that Ruth made mm -hmm. with. So, so one of the things that you have to note is wherever you see in the Bible where the statement, Lord do so to me, is almost like when we were younger. Um, that would say, boy, God brought me the kind of green tree, <laughs> if it's whatever, whatever. But so, so it's the same kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. It's a covenant. You're yes. swearing. Mm -hmm. you know, and you say, listen, Ruth, um, Naomi, nothing will part us unless it's death. That's the only thing that will part us. Wherever you go, I am going. Right. So I'm going to be your tail. Till death do us part. Till death yeah. do us part. You know, so, so that's pretty much it. So the, the, the original Hebrew, instead of saying, entreat me not to leave you, it was urge me not, don't force me to yes. leave you. So, so you realize that um, Naomi was trying her best to have them go because she went as far as to change her name. Don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Call me Mara. Yeah. You know, and, and for all of you Maras out there, um, don't take it to heart. It was, it was an emotional time for her. But I'm not sure if Jessica wants to add anything to it. Yes, um, I would just like to say that Ruth's faith is admirable. Mm -hmm. um, admirable and also selfless mm -hmm. in that she is taking a decision to stick with someone who is in a hopeless situation, who has nothing to offer, mm -hmm. and she was willing to walk into the unknown with this person. Also, bearing in mind that Ruth, being a Moabitess, um, may not know anything firsthand about living in the land of Judah, mm -hmm. may not be very acquainted with the Jewish customs and practices. So that's another layer of the unknown. Right. She probably might have been uncertain about how she would be received, you know, going into that land. But despite all of that, you know, she was prepared to take the chance and to go not knowing her fate. So that is where I think, you know, the, the faith, part of our theme mm -hmm. is really coming out um, with Ruth and her just be, um, just deciding to just take a leap into the unknown, yes. you know, so. So, and, and we want to, to just um, show you what we mean when we say jumping out in the, into the unknown because we don't want to downplay what she did. She's leaving a country, right. a people, a that cultural she's background. That with. So, yes. so it's, it's, it's not like, so we're in Jamaica now, mm -hmm. and it's not as though you are in St. Elizabeth and you're leaving St. Elizabeth and you're coming to Jamaica, I'm coming to Kingston. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more than that. It, it's, you're yes. leaving Jamaica wow. and you're going to Turkey or you're going to the U.S. or somewhere like that. And, and that's the kind of move that you're going to be making. You're moving from one culture to another, you have the fear of being ridiculed, all right, and all those things, and then you have to pay attention to what, what Sister Jessica just said. It, it's not necessarily that Naomi had nothing else to offer, but the state in which she was, 
she wasn't that optimistic person. She wasn't a realist. She was a downright pessimist. Right. So she wouldn't, she, I don't think she had enough in her to see the glass, mm. much less to say, oh, it was half empty. All right. So it was difficult. So, and that's why I, I read the section in, in the first verse that we read where it says, urge me not. So when we see in King James, it says, oh, entreat me not to go. No, no force mm. me to leave you, please. So, so this was a decision that she had taken and she covenanted to do that and she was rewarded because if we, if we move further now and you go for example in um, chapter 4 round about verses 13 um, to 17 we can, see, we can see redemption taking place there um, so when you look at for example in Ruth 4 verses 13 I'll Be read. before you mm -hmm. go there Elder um, on, I just want us to, to spend a couple more seconds on um, Naomi's state of mind. Yeah. And, and that, for me, um, enhanced or highlighted Ruth's um, faith and resilience. Um, in Ruth chapter 1, verse 20, and, and I'm reading from the NLT version, where, where um, when <coughs> Naomi and Ruth got to Judah, um, That's Ruth uh, 120? Yes, it? Ruth 120. And uh, her friends and acquaintances saw them and came out to meet them. Ruth's, um, Naomi's response was, don't call me Naomi. Um, instead, call me Mara. Chances are that wasn't the first time that she was making that comment. Mm -hmm. And for Ruth to be hearing that all the way from Moab. Yeah. <laughs> all, all along that journey, it's a struggle. it is a struggle. Yeah. So you know, it just just show the intense hopelessness and this person who has a very dim outlook on the future. And for you to decide that you are going to stick by that person. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, now as human beings, we really don't like negativity. We don't no. like naysayers you know if you can't paint a picture of encouragement you know it is hardly likely that i am going to want to stick mm -hmm. around you know so i just want us to bear that in mind to to to, to help us to better understand the the train of thought and just the huge sacrifice that Ruth decided to make. You know, I think that based on the fact that you said um, verse 20, I think we should read 20 and 21. Okay. Because when you look at 20, um, mm -hmm. so I'll just read 20 and 21 for context. Um, but she said to them, as, as you just stated, do not call mm -hmm. me Naomi, call right. me Mara, Mara. For, the, for the Almighty mm -hmm. has dealt bitterly with me. I went out full mm -hmm. and the Lord has brought me home again. Empty. empty then she asked the question why do you call me Naomi <laughs> since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me so when you look at that listen she she wasn't she wasn't mincing words any at all and and the Bible goes to to show the juxt the, the, the differences are the juxtaposition between the name Naomi pleasant Mara bitter uh -huh came out, um, left Israel mm -hmm. full, came mm -hmm. back empty. Okay. So she says that the Almighty has afflicted her. Mm -hmm. So don't call me that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And just imagine how Ruth would have had, the, I mean, I guess she would not have known what it meant to have Panadol back in those days, <laughs> but she, she would have done well with some of those um, tablets, you know. So that's the issue that they have. Mm -hmm. So when we get now to to 4, chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 13, where we see the redemption taking place. Um, it starts, it says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Mm -hmm. then, the woman, then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a close relative, meaning a redeemer. All right, and may his name be famous in Israel, and may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also, the neighbor women gave him a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they call his name Obed. 
he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. No? Well, I'll, I'll leave it right there. So, when you see this up now, the first child that, that, that Ruth gave birth to, this was seen as, all right, so Naomi now has someone in her family who is able to grow up and take on the reins or take on the mantle of leadership. So, she no less than no more. That's no, pretty much what's no, happening right no. here. And that's as a direct result of Ruth's faith and Ruth's loyalty to her. Because she would have waited. It would not have been weeks. It, would have, it might not have been months. It might have been years, years. When she came back and all those times on the gleaning field with, 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 with Boaz. Boaz. And then all those things happening. So we see where she has been rewarded. Her faith and her loyalty has been rewarded. And so she, she got the opportunity to become a, an ancestor of even Jesus. Mm -hmm. But... Over to you. I'm not sure what else you'd want to add to that. Um, on, behalf of, of our on behalf of our listening audience, Elder, could you just spend a couple of seconds to explain what is a kinsman redeemer? <laughs> All right. Yes, it's so, something that so, we read a lot, <laughs> and I'm sure so that let you me, know, a number of persons would want a deeper explanation. I thought we were just looking at faith, you know, faith and resilience. Yeah, man, but, you know. <laughs> but, no man. So, when, when the idea now is that, so it was, it was, it was patriarchal, um, pretty much like Jamaica society. Um, and let me say it was patriarchal and patronymic in that you got your father's name. So I would be Kwame the son of. So when you hear um, Joseph, Ben, something another, so that's it. You got your father. The only thing that you needed I'm oversimplifying this though, by the way. What you needed your mother to verify was that you were Jewish. Mm -hmm. So if your mother wasn't Jewish, you weren't Jewish. Jewish right. So your mother had to be Jewish. Um, and so that's how the lineage, the Jewish ancestry came down. But the names that they got was, was from your father. So it wasn't locational. It was literally from your father. Now, if you lost, if there are no men in your family, because we mm -hmm. saw where, for example, in, in Judges and in, in Joshua, where Caleb's daughters, right. they, there were no men, men in Caleb's family. Right. And so they were permitted to own land and property mm -hmm. and all of that. So it was there where the provisions were made, but it wasn't the easiest thing to be done. It depended at time on the judge that was in charge or the leader that was in charge and the legislator that was being, that was being activated. So the idea of a kinsman is that I have a loss. Um, and I needed redemption. So it can be as simple as me owing you, or I was taken captive by another country. My redeemer, my family member, and that's why when you go to the hospital, they ask who is your next of kin. Okay. Who is that person who is able to vouch for you from a familial perspective and then some? Mm -hmm. All right, so the idea is that when, and if you go further down, um, I'll soon find a verse where when Ruth, and Boaz decided to get married. Or he decided that, listen, I like this woman and I'm interested in having her um, in, this, in this particular position. He went to the elders of the city and then he asked publicly whether or not there's a closer relative to her, as in to Naomi, than, to, than, to, than him. And they stated that there was in fact one, but he did not have that not desire. Yes. He was not interested. And so because he was not interested because he would have been first in line, then Boaz had the opportunity to now redeem her and redeem her redeeming her now, this was restoration. You now had equal footing in society because you had men. A male figure, um yes. you had a male figure in, in your family who will be able to negotiate because it's not so much that women were were second class citizens. It was more so that they were seen as vulnerable. So women and children were seen as vulnerable in society. And when you hear the Bible talking about a protector of the widow and um, a defender of the orphan, it's looking at the fact that women are seen as vulnerable in society. And so therefore, you, it's always going to be necessary for you to protect them. So that's the idea. So the, redeem, the kinsman redeemer was seen as the closest relative who was able to do that thing for them. So I hope I've answered your question clearly. Um, if you have any questions, you can always shoot them back and we always yes. look 
um, at responding to them. So Sister Chanel will be looking in the YouTube thing tonight. Right. Um, I don't have access, so she will be doing that. I just have two comments. One comes from Erica. Hi, mm -hmm. Erica. Um, she was just agreeing with what Sister Jessica had said earlier that knew, that Ruth, uh, yes, yeah, she launched out into the deep when she chose to follow Naomi wholeheartedly mm -hmm. to walk with her and f essentially forsake the life that she knew in Moab. Another um, comment comes from Nathaniel um, D'Angelo. She says, good night, mm -hmm. everyone, and says that the book of Ruth is one of her favorite books. Good. All right, so in continuing, we look at the other a character, well, the main character from the other book that is named after another woman in the Bible. The first one um, is Ruth, and Esther is the other book that is named after a woman. And our question is related to protocol, as it were. So we know that in Parliament or in other um, situations, there's a protocol that this person does this and this mm -hmm. one does that. And in the story of Esther, we see something similar. So in what ways did Esther's courage in the face of adversity shape the course of history? <laughs> uh, you want to take that? <laughs> yes, I'll just add my two cents in that the, 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 the long and short of it mm -hmm. is that Esther's courage protected the Jewish nation from genocide. Yes. That is just the long and short yeah. of it because what Haman wanted to do was to commit genocide, mm -hmm. to wipe out. And I mean, when we peel back um, at the story and look at the deep spiritual meaning, it was really an attack on the cross mm. because <laughs> mm -hmm. If Jesus was to come from the Jewish nation and you wipe out all of them, who right. would go to the cross? Right. And that plan of salvation was in place from long time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So by committing genocide, that was Satan's backseat attack right. to prevent the cross. One of the many attempts. The, what, there you go. So... Um, what Esther did was a big deal. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal and um, she had to step out in faith. The Lord again rewarded that faith yeah. because let's face it, she wasn't, she risked her life. She risked her life. Um, we're not looking on Mordecai, but he had a big role to play too, but um, Esther deciding to commit herself to the process, prepared herself to face the king. Um, I don't even think that Esther realized what she was doing. Mm -hmm. She was just um, going by what, uh, you know, obeying Mordecai. Yes. I don't think at the time she realized the, the effect, the impact right. of you know, that sacrifice that she made. Um, but thanks be to God, she did. <laughs> thanks be to so, God. So, she yes. stepped out in um, faith. I think one of the things that we need to look at, you know, um, I, I, I was running through to see if I can find a verse, and I'm hoping that John is online so he could find yes. a verse. Um, so, so Haman is a descendant of, of one of those one of those tribes that God had commanded Saul, Saul. to wipe yes. out. And when I say yes. wipe out, he said, yes. so, so when, when he went, when Samuel came back, mm -hmm. so, so it happened in, mm -hmm. in first and second Samuel and throughout the book of Kings, yes. when Saul was there waiting mm -hmm. on, on, on Samuel, Samuel to come. And you know, Long and he couldn't shot, see he got, come. He got, mm, he got despondent, he got impatient, Patient, and yes. he did something that was not his prerogative. Mm -hmm. He did what the priest was supposed to do. So he said, what is this that I'm hearing? You know, what have and you done? You know, well, you, know, you weren't yes. coming and, and I decided to make mm -hmm. the offering and all of that. But what mm -hmm. is this I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Sheep and, and, and mm -hmm. cows and all of this. Mm -hmm. 
And he said, well, you know, um, I, I kept the best for the Lord. <laughs> I kept the best for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he said, but you also spared the king. So it would not have been the king alone. It would have been the king and some of his noblemen that he would have saved. And so when Samuel took the sword and killed the king himself, they never killed everyone. You know, and some persons by then probably would have had the opportunity Escaped, to escape. Yes. And so when Samuel looked at him and said, the kingdom, God has found someone that's better than you. And so the kingdom has been moved from you. And then he went as far as to say, it's better to obey than to, to sacrifice. sacrifice. That, that was where one of those famous statements mm -hmm. come from. Um, so that was pretty much the discussion there. Fast forward, Israel is now in captivity. Haman is a descendant of that same tribe he had beef. and so yes. he had a beef yes. and then the devil used this as an opportunity mm. you know, because mm. when when the children of israel were living there there was a decree that um moses would have gotten from god and he would have given it to the children of israel when you go in the land that i have placed before you those who are in there who who don't have a desire to worship me they have two choices they either leave or they die so if you don't want to worship the one true God, you leave or you die. So they had the opportunity to leave. And he went as far as to say, if they, they decide, and for the neighboring nations, do not give your sons into marriage, into marriage yeah. nor take their daughters, daughters because they will yes. turn the hearts of, of your children away from mm -hmm. me. All right. So these weren't these weren't monotheistic because we have to look at one of the peculiarities with, with ancient Israel was that they were saying one God when everybody else was saying many, many gods. gods. All right. So so and then we know that Jehovah is he's jealous. Yes. He stated that he's a jealous yes. God and he will not share his glory with another. So it started from there. So there so there's this beef coming up now and right here we see when Ahasuerus is king. And he's in Susa or Shushan. You know, Haman had a beef with the Jewish people because here we still can't get rid of them people. Yeah. They come like ticks. Everyone will go here to and, see them. And, and Haman didn't know that Esther was Jewish. That was it. And that's, what, and that's one of the reasons yes, why she got, she, she got away. Yes. So, so there are some things that culturally right now we would have said, we would have stated that it would have been culturally inappropriate. No, for example, we understand from scripture and based on the custom at the time that um, Esther would have been a teenage girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. It doesn't mean that um, he, um, what's his name, Ahasuerus or Xerxes or, or Artaxerxes, one of those names, which is mostly Ahasuerus you will see in the Bible. It doesn't mean that he was extremely old. He could have been in his twenties, thirties, or forties. Yes. All right. Yes. So it was customary for for a young maiden to be given because you were seen as an adult at 13. Yeah. Right. So you had the bat mitzvah at that time, and for the men, um, you'd have the bar mitzvah. So at 13, that's a ritual. Ritually, you know, ritually you are going to become an adult. So she went through the purification, and we, we remember from scripture how all that happened. Mm -hmm. um, Vashti went, um, they called for her because the king no. was jumped. She, she said, said no, no, you can't say no because this sets a bad precedent. Right. Not just for the king, because the king was mindful. He wasn't, he wasn't going to just extinguish her but then so all the men in the all kingdom. the men were there and they were jousting mm -hmm. they were like you can't do this your mother then if she disobey you then my, my wife, wife can disobey <laughs> me and everybody even and a man by wife, nature doesn't like to be disrespected no no matter no. in what you age know, that's right <laughs> it's just the same as you say why a woman in any age doesn't want to feel unloved the, the man doesn't want to be <laughs> disrespected. disrespected it's a <laughs> big deal and this me no you know so, so that was it and so she she died and so you're looking for another queen to take her place and then esther mordecai you hear that famous statement you were born for such a time who knows it might be that you are you came about at such a time as this she was there with her uncle mordecai so she was an orphan and she was being so that now plays into the idea of kinsman redeemer he was her kinsman, kinsman redeemer, he was her yes, redeemer yes, all right yes. so he had charge over her all right so fast forward now she went through the ritual she became she became queen now the custom is you don't go to the king unless you're called so if you went to the king and the king did not hold out his scepter story done right there so you know 
you know you get yeah. you get what you don't get no you know really. so yeah. uh, and and that's literally all he needed to do just just hold back his hand mm -hmm. all right but you know it says that she was the fairest maiden in the land um and then when he saw her he had compassion and and so she went and she was diplomatic too because she had a mordecai who would have he would have yeah, schooled her yes. so so that so you know her courage her courage led to the safeguarding of an entire nation. nation and we're looking at the small things that sometimes we end up doing that can end up changing the course of history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what if she had decided against i mean salvation most likely redemption most yes. likely would have come but it would have come oh, from so another some, and then else, remember what yes. mordecai said that know that your father's house might That's have been awesome. a dog hill you yes. know mm -hmm. yes, so yes. think about it from that perspective yes, yes, yes. and 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 um I can't help but thinking that the Lord is very strategic to you, <laughs> you know, because let, let's not forget, you know, about how our God operates, you mm -hmm. know, the same thing that he, he did a similar thing with Moses and yeah. Pharaoh's daughter, yes, yes, <laughs> like yes. putting Moses, hiding me, <laughs> Moses mm -hmm. in Pharaoh's palace mm -hmm. to accomplish his plan. And I think it's a similar thing with Esther. Uh, uh, yeah. Because no doubt, that is why he told Saul from way back then Get to kill everybody. Because yes. he knew that this problem would, would resurface. Arise. And so he, he crafted a plan mm -hmm. to have Esther in that palace and to make her m more beautiful so, you know, <laughs> than, than the average girl than the average <laughs> give her a little bit of razzle that uh, yes. you sprinkle know, something over sprinkle <laughs> probably an extra curve or something yes but, yes yes so, so, that's, so, so that's it but i mean it reminds me of a particular verse of scripture though all things work together, together for, for good, good to them to them that love the lord and who are called according, according to, his, to purpose. his purpose yes so we have yes, to pay yes. attention to that you know so so that's pretty much how god works mm -hmm. you know thank you for, for throwing that one in it's a good one um so going back to the chats we have mm -hmm. nathaniel with her comment that says it also speaks to the providence of god god yes. will always have someone who is willing, willing to be used to fulfill his will esther allowed the holy spirit to use her without even fully understanding her mm -hmm. role and we have um, Opal who says, Amen. Yes, she did. Esther knew she served a true and living God while standing up for her people. She was standing for righteousness. So God stood up for her and her people. Amen. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, back to Nathaniel. She's saying uh, she doesn't necessarily agree with the age disparity, um, which was mentioned by Ella <laughs> <laughs> Kwame, but... That can be discussed another time, she indicated. And I'd like to underscore the fact that a decision that is made now for God has a far-reaching effect. Thanks. So you yourself, when you make the decision, you will be blessed by it. But look, if, if you can determine, or if you can see, the, if you could see the future, you'd see how this decision, this one decision, yes. the ripple effect it will have <coughs> on persons around you, per those being in your family or yes. your community, your church, at school. Mm -hmm. So I would submit that whatever choice we make, that we are prayerful and mindful about it because it has an effect for Fire now and for the effect. future. Yes. So we can look at, oh, we have a question here from Elder John. Did Esther listen to patriarchy? <laughs> Had it not been for John, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I can run out the blocks and, and, and start by saying that um, patriarchy in and of itself is not inherently evil. Um, patriarchy becomes evil when you have weak men and, and women who are either afraid or incapable of holding men accountable. Because with what patriarchy exists to do because we understand that um, biblical biblically or <coughs> otherwise we men are closer to violence mm -hmm. than 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 women mm -hmm. and we're not talking about just human beings when you look at males in every species are mm -hmm. uh, for the most part we are always closer to violence than anybody else 
all right? So when you know that there is someone here that can meet you with equal and opposite reaction for whatever stupidity you're going to come with, then you stay at bay. You reason with another man with respect. Remember, you know, we started off by saying that women were always seen as the fairer sex. It's always our duty to protect women and children. And as a man, it's just that nature, it's just nature for us to feel as though, all right, so I have a wife, I have a child, I will die so that they can live. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult, that's a no-brainer for, for him. Wife, mommy will die to protect the child. <laughs> but daddy bread butter. <laughs> All right. And worse so, in this so, day so, and exactly. age. Exactly. So, so that's it. So, so I don't want us to leave thinking, you know, for that, for that viewer who might be thinking that patriarchy is, is evil. No, it's not evil. Patriarchy, unlike, just like any other system, can become corrupted. Yes. And when patriarchy stands <clears> as it ought to, it means that women are protected, it means that children are protected and nurtured so that they can not just thrive, but they can be their best selves. Yes. So that, that's just my two bit on patriarchy. And if you look right throughout the Bible, um, from, from Adam and Eve, <clears throat> your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. If you go back to the original context, He's supposed to be your protector. Because remember, you know, God gave Adam something that Adam is not mm -hmm. capable of giving to anyone else. Mm -hmm. God gave Adam authority. Okay. What Adam can do is delegate responsibility. But at the end of the day, you always have an accounting officer, mm -hmm. someone who's accountable too. So when God came in the garden, why didn't he go to Eve and say, Eve, what have you done? He went to Adam. He went to Adam and asked because I left you in charge. charge yeah. All right, and now that sin has, has been born now in, in the garden, it's no more important than ever for Adam to look out for Eve and to ensure that she's okay. So all you men who have your women and your children and you're not taking care of them, no, say when God comes, you have something for the answer to. All right. And, and, and you know, Elder Kwame, just to, I, I don't want to deviate um, too far. Too far. Because of what but you're, doing. But, but <laughs> you know, there are always persons who, who, talk, who repeat the, the Adam and Eve story. They always say, oh, Eve wondered. Why did she wander from the side of her husband? Why was Adam distracted? No, well, that, <laughs> you could know, look at it from that way. That we, Adam was distracted we, and was not giving as much attention to Eve. We, we could so say, she go and occupy herself. We, we could say that, but, but I won't. And here's why I won't. Because Adam had a job. <laughs> so, there so you go. He got too yeah, absorbed so, so in his job. He wasn't realize, giving enough attention. No, you you know? realize what happened, you know, is that, is that God gave... <laughs> Before, Ad before God decided to give Adam a wife, God gave him a place to stay, he gave him a job, he gave him all those things, you know, so she came as a kept woman. Mm -hmm. That he was supposed to be, because I'm yeah. just feeding into your point, mm -hmm. you know, to say that as provider and protector, he should, from the very minute he should have that it. Eve, he should have <laughs> <not> the <laughs> <gate>. as provider <laughs> and protector, <laughs> you yeah. don't see her for five minutes or <laughs> even one hour. No, but, you but, should but we go have, searching but, for but remember, her. Remember, Sister Jessica, we have no records to say that, listen, Adam was working from home that day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we don't know that, you know, there's nothing to say that Adam was working from home. But he home, allowed her you know? to wander so, off. So she, you know, came out being, being curious, being curious because she born big, you know, so she was curious. So she went out, you know, of all the things. And I think women nowadays, they have learned their lessons because most of them tend to be afraid of reptiles. Yeah. You know, you saw that snake and it's talking, and instead of using something, no, but I think it was the norm. No, I think I think that the snake or the reptile or whatever it is got that ugly side after the fall. What I do believe, and just in my is imagination, is that we could communicate across the species, yes, really? Because I think, um, after the fall, the just as all sin marred the human race, I think it marred it, all of creation it, it, and the and it, the snake. No man, it, 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 it,
No, persona. It, it definitely did our character. Because, because when you when you read through Genesis, it mm-hmm. says um, it says on your belly shall you crawl. Exactly. You know, that's one. Yes. And then it says the earth will not give its abundance mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. From by the sweat of your brow you shall, shall you shall bread, eat your bread. bread. And then so things got difficult for everyone. But I'm not sure if we realize it. And I've said it before that humanity wasn't punished for for the sin. You know. And follow me now. They were cast out of the garden, yes, but that was the, that was redemptive. Right. And you soon see why I say it was redemptive. Yes, I and, agree. And in addition, now we know from scripture that the wages of sin is what? Death. So God said to Adam, in dying you shall surely die. The serpent said to Eve, you shall not surely die. So in dying, so you're not really dead, you know, Eve. You're dead, but you're not really dead. That's literally what he said to her. And so she ate the fruit. She probably would have made some smoothies and she should make tarts and all of them things. So Adam, come in and see what's going on. He just ate it because as far as he's concerned, there's no other like you. She's one of a kind. You are the only one here that looks like me. So whatever it is. And he trusted her. Unfortunately, fool, you know, fool. that's the first time a man was unable to start just... <laughs> Eve, me nah eat this her. stain at the corner, wait, oh till, wait till God come. <laughs> you know, he could have done that, but fine, whatever it happened. So now when God cast them out, God said, see, man has become like one of us, to, has, to have experiential knowledge of good and evil. Let us put him out of the garden, lest he stretch forth and eat it, from yes, the tree of life man. and live forever. Ever in a sinful All right. state. That yes, can't happen. Right. So when God put out man. It was for our own sake. He, that was redemptive because now he made a promise that the seed of the woman, you know, the woman shall bear seed and her seed shall crush the head of the serpent or the head of the serpent's seed. So when you look, that, look at that now, you know, in order for that promise to be kept in the truest sense of the word, he had to put them out of the garden. Right. And then since then, God has not left himself without a witness. Mm-hmm. That was the only time God did not have a witness. So they weren't punished, but continue. We don't want to segue too far. <clears throat> so commenting from oh, Sister boy. Pula, she says, Esther shows us, showed she was a strategic thinker and provides for us a lesson in discernment and timing. Yes. Excellent point. Yes. Thanks for that, Sister Pula. Excellent Pular. point. Well, so. Your college should go on big. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she put some thought in it because... Um, Mordecai can't take any props for that. No. Because when Mordecai said to her, listen, you have to do this thing, Esther was the one who came up with the strategy. Of course, I believe she was led by the Holy Spirit. Definitely. But then we are not bound to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, are we? No. And she allowed herself. She submitted to that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think I have to also <laughs> add to, to what she said that... Um, and, I, and I've said it this way a number of times because I don't think I've yet come into that place where I can say it better, that God gambled. And, and here's why I say God gambled. God gambled because he made beings that were capable of resisting him. Amen. Now, remember, you know, look at God. God is the omnipotent one. He's the, he's, he's the epitome of what is powerful. And then he went and made beings that were equally capable of resisting him. Right. But then he understood, as we are slowly beginning to understand, that we can only truly love him if we have the ability to choose to, to, no. yeah, to say no. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and that's even better now, the fact that we have the ability and we have the will to say no, but yet still we say yes, that makes it out. So he knows now that, listen, she doesn't love me because I made her love yes. me. I made her to love me. No, she, she loved me because she know wants to love me. And I think that was Adam's problem. <laughs> you know? He never feel like he could have resist. You know, he could have just go outside and just sit down outside until, you know, you have an argument, leave her in the house and just go sit down. When God come looking for, looking for both of you in the garden, say, boy, God, she inside, you know. She eat wool if I saw much enough to eat. <laughs> you know, so, so it could have been like that. But, you know, I digress. Oh, um, Elder John writes, she ate us out of house and home. That has always been important, even before mankind sinned. So, <laughs> so, so, so in, in, in other words, love belly. 
you know yes we love belly yes you know so so this is not it's not mm-hmm. a, oh it's not you know there's a parlance oh you know the way to a man's heart is this to, no oh. the way to anybody's Body's heart you know, uh, one, appetite appetite and appetite. that's why and if we look at sin you know if we look mm-hmm. at sin mm-hmm. how else is someone drawn out except by his lusts right and and when his lusts become um desire and his desire give birth to sin then sin gives birth to death and then John or James said that all that is in the world is lust lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life and when you look at how Eve sinned she saw that it was pleasing to the eyes she saw that it was good for food and it was desirable to make one wise after all of those things after she has re- she realized those things then she stretched forth her hand and she ate the fruit and then it says who oh, the man that was also with her he never need to look for nothing him just see it and say all right then because she have it and she's not dead might as well me do it even though i know that she's going to die that was suicide and and then um <clears throat> for many of us today we do the same thing we know that when we eat a lot of sugar we're going to get fat but it does it nice. stop it is nice <laughs> <laughs> Ah. It's sweet in the mouth and bitter in, in the, the belly. belly. <laughs> it just tastes <laughs> nice. Great so disappointment. Who are we to judge and criticize Eve? No, well, I mean, when you see, all of us are. We're at although one sense. could argue that it's because of she why we stay so bad. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, we have adapted some of these traits from our parents, yeah. um, and and sometimes we have taken it a step further because some of the things that Adam and Eve would not have dared to do. we have gone way beyond to do that so so that's it right. but go on go so on. a quick question from york alley walters is it possible the unfallen worlds were aware of lucifer's fall before the earth was populated with adam and eve ah uh, wow um so that's going to be um counterfactual no as in counterfactual because we have no definitive evidence mm-hmm. so whatever this is conjecture no right. so so i speak as a man So this is <laughs> so it's a case whereby I believe that there are other fallen unfallen worlds. Um and and it seems to give that impression in the Bible. But then no to say that Lucifer fell and then came here and then after he came here then God made us and put us here. It might not have been the case because the real test wasn't Lucifer per se. The real test of disobedience or obedience wasn't really Lucifer. It was really the tree that was in the midst. And I think that every every bit of god's creation has a test to go through um wherein you need to show your loyalty because i think god is big on loyalty mm-hmm. all right so he placed us in the garden and then remember even though lucifer was kicked out of heaven he wasn't kicked out of the the sympathies of heaven so he still right. had access to that place yes. so we don't know when the war and started and job the book of exactly. job demonstrates yeah. that so yes. we don't know when the war started in heaven whether it was mm-hmm. before the creation of mankind or after but al hazard i guess and say it was after the creation of mankind that that he fell and then he came here now and then he did what he did right so so that was that was it so if it was before the creation of mankind my assumption no as again just reminding that we are doing this conjecture he would have been somewhere else you know you wouldn't put him with newly or with beings or put him somewhere and then create beings who might not be able to resist him and then put him there because you know how the devil works you know he's cunning right so so that was it okay and jumping back to our look or um, discussion on our women in the bible question. <clears throat> okay um What can we learn about resilience from the woman caught in adultery and <laughs> Jesus' response to her accusers? Is there any lesson at all we can learn from that? Uh, I think I think Sister Jessica can grab that one. <laughs> okay. Um Well, the first thing comes to mind or that comes to mind is Jesus's um compassionate response to the woman caught in adultery and um his challenge to the accusers and just the the whole grace um that Jesus demonstrated and I'm going to be truthful to you mm-hmm. sis um before while we were preparing for the discussion I said to um <clears throat> elder Kwame that 
I do not think because we, we, we looked at the woman at the well as mm -hmm. one of those persons who demonstrated faith and resilience. And yes. I said to Elder Kwame that I don't think the woman <laughs> on the well demonstrated any faith and resilience because for one, she, was, she went to the well and Jesus was the one who started the conversation with her. Mm -hmm. And I am drawing from that to say similarly in this situation, this woman with adultery was dragged before Jesus. So mm -hmm. um, she never had a choice, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> she, yeah. <laughs> she was dragged there, yeah. um, getting ready to be stoned by her accusers. Um, so truth be told, if you, if, if you were to stack her up, among all the women that we're looking at, I would say she would fall at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> because so, she, mm -hmm. she, when you compare her to it a Ruth. It was circumstantial. And, right, yeah. it was yeah, circumstantial. And you compare her to a Ruth and, and, um, and Esther, Naomi, yeah. uh, you know. Who, Stalwarts. Right. Yeah. You know, she was just placed in a situation and just left to the mercy of Jesus. So I think she was she was a pawn. She mm -hmm. was she was a pawn in, in the game because if we if we should follow the verse um, or the scripture to its logical conclusion, um, and that's by the way it's it's taken from John eight. Um, John chapter eight, we're looking at verses two through to eleven. Um, and again I'm reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. No in no early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Teacher, mm -hmm. this woman was caught in adultery. Hear this part now. In the very act. Now Moses, <laughs> in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? You know, they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And then those who heard it being convicted or pricked by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest or eldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Yes. Has no one condemned you? No, I like the old King James better than this one now because she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. more. But in the old King James, or some iterations of the old King James, she said to him, no one, Lord? Like, it was a question. Mm -hmm. oh. So Because he said, where are your accusers? You know, no one, no one accuses you. And then she says, no one, Lord? Like, mm. no one? Because he's there. And he, he's there now, so he can actually, so she's admitting guilt. Right. She's at, this is an admission of guilt. But the law of Moses, that particular thing that, that they were talking about, it can be found um, further on in, 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 well, in Leviticus and Exodus, where it would have had to be, you needed a witness. Mm. All right? And it is impossible I put it to you that it's impossible to catch her in the very act, and she alone did it. Right, <laughs> exactly. All right. So there's no God did not make any monosexual. It is it, two. All right. So it was a heterosexual thing. They were doing something right there, and she they stated that they caught her in the very act. Where's the man? Chances so, are he was right among there. the mob, right? The mob, they said, Teeth never love is a teeth with long bag. Yes. So Chances she gets catch, he he's gonna be the loudest mob, among yes. them. So, so that's it. So to she save was, his skin. Yeah, she was. <laughs> I feel judged. So, <laughs> so, so that was it. But, but yeah, so, so what happened there? It was a kangaroo court. Um, kangaroo court, she was a pawn. And they tried to use her to trap Jesus. But what Jesus did was clever. He just 
knelt down and he wrote down their sins. That's that's just me adding some 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 creativity to that. Right. He wrote down their sins. So John Tom, he did this. And he stole again, that. And grace, the, and mercy. grace, mercy, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came came out now of that is is the idea of how we should judge. Because mind you, we oftentimes look at the Bible and say the Bible say, don't judge. It did say that, but that was just a part of the statement. Exactly. Judge not, come on, lest ye be judged. Because the same measure with which you judge this person, it will be meted out to you. Fear. In other words, the same stick or stick sheep, stick goat. So whatever standard I'm using to judge you, that's the same standard that will be used to judge me. So it did not say you should not judge. It said that you should be careful. Because if it said that you should not judge, then you would have had a contradiction because Paul came and asked that question. Can't you judge a matter such as this between yourselves? Do you not know that we're going to be judges of angels and men? So if you can't judge here, so I'll say I will judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just saying, food for thought. So grace, mercy, forgiveness, compassion, and what it means to judge and how you should actually judge. So that's my two cents. I'm not sure if you have anything else to add, Sister Jessica. No, you've covered it well, Elder. You've <laughs> we covered have it well. We have a comment here from Elder Phillips that says, the breaking of the fourth and fifth commandments were also called for stoning. Mm -hmm. um, he asked, did Jesus write the Ten Commandments in the sand? So when he wrote, when he knelt down to write in the sand, he's asking mm -hmm. if it was the Ten Commandments that were written out it, in the sand. It is possible because yes. um, remember, the fifth commandment was the first one with promise. Mm -hmm. Honor your mother and your father. But then remember, he was chiding the Pharisees and the scribes because he said that you have told your children that if they are doing this to the, are giving this to the church, they can simply say raka or, or whatever that word was, and they would be absolved of their obligation to take care of their parents. So you have taken, you have, you have forfeited the law of God for the traditions of men. And then it says, as Elder John would have preached in church, in vain do you worship me. So, so he chided them for that. So if he was writing the Ten Commandments, that would have been something that stuck out like a swear thumb again. Or he could be writing some of the deeds of, the, of, of our accusers. That one sounds more interesting. Yeah. Right, say that, yeah. Like them say, so, so them say some things <laughs> where... Said, look here, this man look like him. I got exposed, you know. Let me just yeah, no. so, so, take away myself. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, because he wrote down the sins and then said, Oh, mm. he it was without no, sin. Same cast first stone. No, everybody look at what he's writing same. and he say, Okay, you all right, know, so what? that's me. Take away that's myself. Me. Yeah. So, that preacher, yeah. that preacher, that preacher, yeah. that preacher, yeah. that preacher, that preacher, that preacher, that that was it. We have um, a comment here from York Ali. He gives an excerpt from the book Patriarchs and Prophets where he mm -hmm. says, this passage, he would say, makes a solid case that Lucifer's fall happened before Adam and Eve came to be. Mm -hmm. And it says, The earth, after its creation, and the beasts and the vegetables upon it, were placed under his dominion. But when man was created, God placed him over the earth and all that it contained. I Satan was jealous of man and determined to destroy him. And that's taken from, as I said, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 60. And I believe it's chapter, sorry, um, paragraph two. I'll, 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 I'll go look into, into that one. Um, because we, we know when you look at, for example, in Colossians, in Colossians 2, it speaks about Jesus making um, a spectacle of powers and principalities. And he's reclaiming a dominion that Adam had. And also, when, so, so to say that, the devil came here and was placed here first before man. It would presuppose that he got dominion before man and then it was taken from man and not taken from him given and then to given to man and then he stole it back or took mm. it back. So 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 that's pretty much why I I have this Is it, would you say placed here or given access? It could be that he was given access because yeah, he had access he to had heaven access even after he was because cast out. Also bearing in mind Satan's rank. Before the fall, yeah, you know. Covering cherub, right? And cherub. there you go. Mm -hmm. So this was a high-ranking angel you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So chances are he would have been granted access to all the world. Yeah. So, so it would not have been un uncommon for him mm -hmm. to stop by and, and see what's there happening. There you go. You know. So 
are you are we i think we're fresh you know, we got the signal we, we got yes. the signal we're fresh out of time no um so we just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for sitting standing and commenting um in the chat and we just want to remind you to keep the discussion going um put your queries your comments your concerns we will be able to see them um, next week and we'll be able to address them as well and next week god's willing we should also have um sister jessica still with us and uh, i won't say who else will be coming but someone else will be coming i'll have another rose um among the thorn here you know so that's that's what will happen next week but put your questions your queries your comments chanel thank you for um easing us through the discussion oh, and it's a pleasure Sister Jones, thank you very much for adding such value to the conversation and for you, our listening audience, watching audience, thank you for making this a robust discussion. So I just want to take this opportunity to leave you with a particular verse of scripture, but before I do so, I will do as is customary and through the newest person on the spot to pray for us as we close. <clears throat> Let us pray. Abba Father, we... Thank you for another opportunity to open your word and to explore your truths and to allow your Holy Spirit to minister to us. Lord, we hope that we would have given you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that your name deserves tonight. Lord, as we commit ourselves to continue to explore your word we ask that you will send your holy spirit father to help us to remember and to ponder on what we have studied here tonight lord we also pray that the study will show up in the various feeds of the persons who need to see this study to learn more about your grace and your goodness lord and i pray that you will help us to be even more prepared for the next study and you will prepare the viewers and the hearts that need to be touched and blessed by it we tell you thanks for what you continue to do through us as we give you the praise the glory and the honor and we pray in Jesus' name amen Amen. So, just want to leave with you Proverbs, Proverbs 4, 18, that says, The path of the just is like a shining light that shines ever brighter until the new day, until such time. I am Kwame Thomas, one of the local leaders in the Andrews District of Churches, and you just saw on the screen Sister Jessica Jones, and you heard in the background Sister Chanel Phillips. Um, thank you to the production team, and thank you for having been an awesome audience. Do have yourselves a blessed evening.